Ooh. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our refocus session this Sunday, 27th of July, 2021. Um, we just would like to welcome you to just a session of fellowship and get together. Keisha, hello, how are you? Good afternoon here in Barbados. It's afternoon. So good afternoon, good evening, good night to wherever you are joining us from around the globe. We are happy. We are blessed. We are privileged that you have decided to spend some time with us as we look at the whole idea of refocusing, as Chipo would tell you, the last 18 to 19 months of our lives for the most part has literally been turned upside down, depending oh, on which yes. part of the world you are. It's been more significant and more impactful for you, depending on what it is you have had to face. But this mm -hmm. evening, for those who don't know, for those who need a reintroduction, we want to zero in on the man of the hour as we seek to refocus, as we seek to pursue our dreams and our goals as we seek, seek to reimagine re, re and have these visions come to life and manifest. So I pray for you that after you have finished this session with us, that you are energized, you are reinvigorated, and you are ready to launch out boldly to do what God has called you to do. Most definitely, Keisha, most definitely. So this is this is our session today. We're looking at refocusing. And we're going to think about vision. We're going to think about dreams and goals. And as Keisha already said, you know, we've been looking over the past 18 months and everybody has gone through some form of turmoil or another. It, it, there's, no, there's no place on the earth that has not experienced the COVID pandemic. And because of it, we've had to reimagine certain things. We've had to reprioritize a lot of things. And we all know that at the beginning of the year, we all make New Year's resolutions. I'm entering into a new year. This is what I would like to do. This is what I'd like to achieve. But there's been some other circumstances that have walked along or just come in while we are trying to achieve these goals. And what we're trying to do today is actually to say to you, we all in the same boat. That's the first thing. But being in the same boat doesn't mean that we should stay in the same boat. Do we still want to achieve the dreams that we had at the beginning of the year, the dreams that we believe that God has input within our lives? If the answer is yes, then this session is for you. So as a trainer, first thing I like to do is I like to think about uh, the definition of a word. So the first word that we want to look at here is refocus. What does refocus mean? Now, according to the, uh, the Cambridge English Dictionary, refocus is adjusting the focus. You're adjusting the focus or lens of an object. So it could be a camera. Or what you're doing is you're adjusting the focus of your eyes. And when we're talking the eyes, we talk about the physical eyes, but also the spiritual eyes, the inner eyes. Because a dream doesn't come when your eyes are open. A dream comes when your eyes are closed. This is when you see in your mind, possibilities, realms, things, dreams, visions. It's when our eyes are closed. So when we are adjusting the focus, it's just to adjust so we can see much more clearly. Mm -hmm. The other meaning of refocus, according to the Cambridge English Dictionary, is to focus, is to now give attention to. You need to give attention. It's not just putting the eyes. You need to give attention. And this is what you'll hear today. I want to give attention or perhaps maybe you need to give resources towards your dreams. So this is what you'll hear about today. So you've seen our posts during the last week. We, you know, we've been talking about these difficult 18 months. And basically what we've done is we've said, if life is, if you feel that life is really run away from you, it's gotten away from you, it's making you feel overwhelmed because I know I've been overwhelmed. It's making you feel like a failure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess right here and now, there's some goals that I had made at the, at the beginning of the year that I have not yet achieved, but I know I'm not alone. Maybe you're feeling anxious or depressed or really concerned about the future because you do not know what the future holds at the moment. So basically this session that we have is just for us now to learn the practical steps 
that we can take to refocus and get back on track when nothing goes right and it feels like our lives has gone off the rails. Oh, the guests that you're going to see today are just fabulous. They're God-driven and set by God himself. And they're going to they're gonna just show you and give you, share with you a word in season. That word in season, that word is for you. Each one of you that is connected here, the word is for you. Which means I myself, the word is for me. Keisha, the word is for you. Charlene, that word is for you. Kumbu, the word is for you. And Baba, Amen. that word is for you. So whatever word we hear today, let us refocus not only our goals, but can we also refocus that lens that I was talking about on the visionary himself, God. He's our grand overall designer. So it's not just refocusing on my physical goals, my financial goals, emotional, relational goals. The first goal we want to focus on or vision we want to focus on is the visionary himself. Let's refocus our lens to God himself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Kisha, God, the great visionary. You, you know, Chipo, I was thinking, I was zeroing in on this for the last day or so. And even as I was sharing with you guys before we went live, the reality is everything we do is centered around our relationship with Almighty God. Everything that I am is because of who he created me to be. So I have to keep my eyes on him. I do not have a choice. And, you know, I can't just say he's my refuge and my strength. I can't just make it lip service. I mean, if I've learned nothing <laughs> within the last year and a half, I have to walk the walk. I've been forced to walk the walk. If you thought that COVID was bad, in Barbados, we ended up having COVID. Then we had the ash from a neighboring island that is volcano erupted. Then we had a freak storm. Then we had Elsa. And I was, I remember sharing with Chipo, we had trees. Wow that were so much older than I was, uprooted, hmm. uprooted. Yeah. And God spared life, I'll be 40 next year. So imagine trees that are more than 40, uprooted. Yeah. And it reminded me, because of who I am in Christ, I need to shift my mindset. I can't look at what's in front of me all the time, but I have to look at what he's promised me, what he's put in his word, what he has said, signed, sealed, and stamped concerning me, as his daughter, I am an heir, I am a joint heir, I am a child of God, and by right, there are certain things that are mine that no one can take away. Yeah. That has to be the foundation when I think about what I want to do with my life. It has to be. And to be honest, I can't say to anyone that anything that I've done is because of Keisha. No. I love Chipo. She can push me, but she's going to push me as God leads her to push me. Yes. I love Barbara. She's going to push me. Jackie has pushed me. Charlene, you, you're now coming into my life and I'm getting ready for the nudges because I know you're going to do it too. Come who you're going to do it as well. <laughs> and the reality, is, the reality is, is that because of who I am in Christ, he's going to align me with people who want to see me grow and stretch. Yes, so today we are here. Get comfortable because we're going to make you a little uncomfortable. And that's the idea because we want you yes. to shift. We want Come you on. to move. Mm -hmm. If I didn't get uncomfortable yes. in 2017, 2018, if I didn't battle with depression, if I didn't battle with mm -hmm. thoughts of suicide, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. And yeah. so let me tell you, if I'm here and if I'm still fighting, if I'm still pushing, trust me, you can do it. So, yeah. you know, guys, I, I'm living what I'm speaking. It's not easy. Every day will not be the same, but we got to really transform our minds, mm -hmm. really give our, give our lives to Almighty God and yes. stop looking at things in these little boxes because all oh, pray, oh God, he owns everything. Hallelujah. He does. Yes. He does. You know, so I get excited <laughs> when I think about where God is taking me and what he's going to do. And I pray you get excited too. Chippo, over to you. <laughs> So I think we have first up a powerhouse. Before, before we ah. even powerhouse, 
I just I'm wanted, excited. I'm sorry. I'm excited. Here. I know you're excited, sis, but I, I wanted to posit something here. And, uh, you know, if you've got your notepads on the ready, I want to show you this, this, this the visionary himself is so key. Mm. It's so pivotal to this message today that we get introduced to him right in the beginning of the Bible. Bam. So I just wanted just us to look at the beginning of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens mm -hmm. and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Uh, listen, people, God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. And mm -hmm. he was hovering, it says, on a dark place. And it's the same place that maybe you and I are dwelling at the moment. Things are dark. It's, it's formless. It says empty darkness is over the surface. Things are looking bleak. And it, but it tells us the word of God tells us that the spirit of God is hovering over the waters. It's hovering. So irregardless of what situation we are in right now, mm -hmm. the spirit of God is hovering. This is good news. This is good news. If we go to verse two, we're now told, now listen, we told then God said, let there be light. In fact, I'm reading mm -hmm. this from NIV. But if we read it from the literal Hebrew translation, there's no let there be light. God says, light be. Simple as. Because once we say, let there be light, we're giving a probability to say, it might or it might not happen. The English could not even translate the depth or the, the, the you know, the, the deepness of this meaning. So they had to say, let there be light. It, if I say, let there be light, I'm giving probability to it might or it might not happen. God mm -hmm. said, light be. In that darkness, there was a command. But through that command, the reason for that command was a vision. He could not mm -hmm. stand to see the darkness. He could not stand Hallelujah. to see the emptiness, the voidness. That's the same. He can't stand to see that in our lives. And today he says, light be. Is it light you need? Don't say, let there be light. Speak the literal translation, light be. And listen, because of the command that was given, the, the, that text says, and there was light. God saw this light and it was good. <laughs> and he separated the light from the darkness. Now note here, darkness was not taken away, <laughs> but light came when darkness was dwelling over. So I'm not here, we don't wanna be here to, to sugarcoat and tell you that guys, life will be 100% rosy. Mm -hmm. Problems come, darkness does come. But when darkness comes, do you know what to do? Let's follow the example of the visionary himself. Mm -hmm. Light be. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanna to do to introduce today. And now, Keisha. <laughs> mm -hmm. We want to introduce our first guest and yeah, Keisha, I'll allow you to, to start and then I will just tag on because I want to give her name. I'm going to be a bit unfair, but I want to give her name. That's, that, that is all right, Chippo. Um, I would not have known Chippo if I had not met um, this, this dynamic, um, God-led, motivational, loving, caring, generous genuine and authentic woman of God, yeah. a leader wherever she goes, and one who is always seeking to pour into others. And, you know, even as I think of her, you know, my prayer for her is that God would fill her to overflowing because she is always giving. Yeah. I do not know when she finds time to rest. Yeah. Because I think she's one of these people whose brain is always going and she literally has to shut off. But a woman who, who is about seeing people grow, she has added tremendous value to my life. And I'm thankful for one of my mentors uh, and my leader who would have introduced me to her. And I hope you guys see that nothing good you keep to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Nothing good. You keep to yourself. And that has always been me. So now I'm in the company of like-minded people. So yeah. environment does matter. It helps you to grow. Yeah. All right. And as she always says, if somebody takes your idea, 
But God who gave you that idea is going to give you another one. Let them take it. You're going to be overflowing with ideas. So just give freely. And trust me, you're going to get pressed press down, shaken together, and running over. So th there's a dynamic lady here in the room that you're going to hear from in just about a minute. But Chippo, I'm going to let you introduce her. Let, let, let the people know who this woman of God, who this woman of the hour is. Wow. So, I mean, Keisha, Keisha's articulated it so well. Now, this lady, um, when I joined the John Maxwell team, she was the first person. So you, what happens is when you join a big team, you start to look for people who are like-minded, who think along the lines that you think along. And she was one of them. And she used to sit on the President's Advisory Council. And I, I listened to her and I learned from her. I stalked her. I must confess I did. You know, there was a time she did uh, power mornings when you did prayers in the mornings, Barbara. And I would connect because she did them at 8 a.m. But here in the UK, I would connect. So she would be praying. She would be praying specifically for businesses, business women, women in business. And yeah, this woman, I met her after a while. And she has stretched me. The same tribe that Keisha is talking about, just the mentorship that we've had with her has stretched me. For me to actually do these lives that you see here today is this young lady today because she picked out the gift in me and allowed me to almost discover the gift. Mm -hmm. And today I'm able to share the gift that I have with everybody else. Uh, uh, she's going to talk. She has, she, she's, she's a powerhouse. She's a piece of dynamite, you know, one you just put in a room and then it blows up a building. So I just want you guys to get ready. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts and anything else. Fortify yourselves because I, I, it is such a great honor and a privilege to introduce to you one who I call my sister, my big sister, and it is Barbara Littles. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Keisha, and so much, Chippo, for that beautiful introduction. And uh, I will say this. It's only because Jesus is the head of my life. Uh, so I give all honor and glory to him. And thank you all for inviting. And I'm so glad to be here with you all today because everyone here today is a powerhouse. You are a lighthouse. We are lighthouses. And we are here in order for that light to shine. Not for our own purpose, not for our own glory, but for the glory of God. And so today, as we are talking about, you know, refocusing, I've been in that place where I've had to refocus. I've been in that place where things have gotten off track. I've been in that place when I'm thinking, okay, how did you get here? And so I love the fact that this is our topic today because sometimes in the middle of needing to refocus, people give up. And I wanna make sure that today you understand as you hear these speakers, don't give up, don't give up. So I wanna take you back to, to the story that most of you know um, about two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Jesus was coming through with his disciples and Mary, Martha invited him to the house. And so you know how it is when you invite somebody to your house, you want everything to be just right. And Martha is running around and she's trying to get everything right. And Mary is sitting over there listening to Jesus. And Mar Martha comes over and says, Jesus, and I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus, um, don't you care that, <laughs> that Mary's not helping me? And this is, I'm going to give you exactly what he says to her. He says, Martha, Martha. He calls her name twice because as Chippo said earlier, what he's doing is he's getting ready to refocus her. He wants her to hear what he's getting ready to say. And he says, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So I want us to think today, no matter where you are, if you're overwhelmed, if you don't know what the next thing is, if you have too much on your plate and, and you're being called, and a lot of it may be very good things in many directions, I want you to think about what he is saying to Mary, what he's saying to Martha. And the thing that he is saying is at this moment, I need you to focus in on the one thing. So I want to talk to you today about 
the one thing. The one thing is the way to refocus, to make sure you stay on track. I remember Steve Jobs, uh, late Steve Jobs years ago said, most people think focus is the things that you need to be paying attention to. He said, but to find focus is to determine those 100, those 1,000 things that you don't need to be concerned about. And Jesus is saying to her at this time, you know, and he's not condemning Martha. He understands that those things need to be done. He says, but at this moment, she has chosen the best part. The idea of uh, refocusing is not that you have to give up everything else. It's determining at this moment, what is the thing that I need to be doing? Anxiety comes because we either thinking too much about the past or we're thinking too far into the future and too much into the future. And we forget the moment. I remember the day driving. And I, you know, I'm always a person thinking about the, you know, the future. I'm always planning. I'm a strategic planner, right? And, and, and I hear the spirit say, I need you to live in the moment. I need, to I need you to understand what it is that I am giving you right now. And so I need you to refocus from what you're thinking about, because I'm going to take care of that. And this theme has runs all through the Bible where people are focused and they concentrate on the one thing. So today I'm gonna to take a few minutes just to tell you, concentrate on one thing. If you look at Solomon, there was one thing. The Lord asked him what he would want. And Solomon began to recount all the things that God had done. He understood all the things that God could give him, but he asked for wisdom. And the Lord said, because you asked for wisdom, and that was the one thing you asked for. All the other things I'm going to give to you. And there will not be another that will be like you. If it's in your business, in your ministry, in your life, in your home, when you understand the one thing that you need to be focused on, I guarantee you there will be no one else that will be like you because you have already been set apart. You've already been set apart. If you look at Esther, Esther was also asked, what is the one thing? And Esther understood the one thing. So our challenge today to get refocused, we un must understand what is the one thing that I need to get refocused on. David, a warrior, a man of prayer, a praiser. He said, this one thing I desire, this one thing I desire that I may dwell in your house forever. It was not 10 things. It was the one thing. So my Message to you today is what is the one thing? What is the one thing? It doesn't mean that you don't have a multitude of things. You said, Barbara, I have a multitude of things I need to get done. Yes. But have you ever been in a situation where you're at home doing some things at home you need to do and you're thinking about work and you go to work and you're thinking about the things you need to be doing at home? So we, our mind tends to always go to the place of where we are not at now. So in our business, how do I get to the one thing? There's something very special about the one thing because the one thing allows you to do all the other things. The special component of the one thing is that it allows you to do all the other things. So there are certain questions you have to ask yourself to get to the one thing in your business, in your ministry, in your life. One of the questions I'd like you to ask is, what's most important in this moment? What's most important in this moment? When a woman is giving birth, if you've been there, if you've given birth, if you've experienced it, when a woman is giving birth, there is a time where her only focus is to push. When you are giving birth in your business, when you are giving birth in your ministry, there's a time of preparation, which is her nine months, and there's that time when she just needs to push. She has to focus in that moment on breathing and pushing. That's it. Not on what's going to happen tomorrow. Not on what's happened for the last nine months. But she has to focus in on that moment to push. So one thing you have to ask yourself, what is it that I need to be doing in this moment? And whatever that thing is, do it in that moment and do it 100%. Secondly is timing. Mary and Martha. G Jesus knew that the other things were important. But he said, at this moment, see, I'm not going to be with you always, uh, Martha. Mary knows that. So while I am here in this moment, she has chosen the best thing, and that's to sit at my feet. And then third, identify that one thing 
that will make the most impact in everything else that you do? What is the one thing? You know, sometimes we have five things and, and we're thinking, I need to do all these five things. Yes, but what is the one thing that you need to do right now that will have the most impact on everything else you do? And so as you ask yourself these three questions, what you find yourself getting to is the one thing. In the foundation of these three questions, you start out by praying and asking God for direction. You see, because we plan our ways, but God orders our footsteps. So as he plans our, we plan our ways and he wants us to be planned. He says, you must plan. He tells us to have a vision, to make it plain, to write it down. But then he says, okay, now turn that over to me and let me order your footsteps. So today I'd say, allow God to first order your footsteps. Ask your thing, yourself these three questions so that you may get to the one thing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. So I'm picking up here. We need to plan on purpose. There's purpose in planning. I love that the, the analogy you gave of the pregnant woman. Once she understands that she's pregnant, there's only one aim. <laughs> it's to give birth. <laughs> one it's aim. Gonna take, it's going to take nine months. Nine months. Whatever's happening to her body, whatever changes, whatever medication she has to take but she's only going towards one thing and that's to give birth. One. She may be doing other things in the background, eating right, eating properly, taking the vitamins, but it's until we hold baby in our arms that we know that that vision is complete. Wow. And Tipo, let me say this. She's, she's focused on giving what birth to that one thing. Yes. At yes. that moment. Yeah. All the yes. things she's doing. Absolutely. Is for it's, that moment. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even add to it. I don't know if my fellow colleagues can add to this, but this is, yeah, yeah. I've written notes. I've written notes. I am. And I, I, I totally agree. Keisha, you are hiding. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm thinking because um, my, my daughter turned 18 last week and I can remember everything that took place on that day. Barbara, literally, there was one focus bringing her into this world. There was literally one focus. So to use that analogy is powerful mm -hmm. because despite the pain, everything that was happening, you wanted to be able to be a part of bringing life. Now let's turn it around. We are speaking about bringing life to our dreams. And as we want to give mm -hmm. life to a human being, for those of us who've had the privilege to be parents, why are you leaving yourself out of the grand scheme of things? Wow. So wow. think about that for a moment. Yeah. Why are you leaving yourself wow. out of the grand scheme of things? Just as God would have allowed us as parents to be the part of a process to bring a life into this world, he's asking us to co-sign with him. But to co-sign, as Barbara said, we have to be focused. We okay. have to be focused. And until we zero in on that one thing, because some things, that's the truth. We are all thinking about too many things. I am guilty of that at times. Mm -hmm. My brain is always going. I need to sometimes slow myself down. But when you slow yourself down, where can I have the most impact? You don't need to be good at 10 things. You can no. be good at one and it changes everything. Come on. So Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you challenged me. So, <laughs> Keisha, just to thank you, and you know, and I, I would just say this: you know, Keisha said something that's it's so powerful is that you don't need to be good at everything. Yeah. And the thing that Keisha and Chippo are doing right now, collaboration, is absolutely key in not being overwhelmed, yes. in not being overwhelmed when you bring people, other people along. Understand yes. what it is I need to do at this moment, and what's mm -hmm. for me to do. You, yeah. you know, you, we think about it. Solomon built the temple. Uh, David wanted to do it. And the Lord said, no, yeah. you have, I, I, you, you've been the warrior. That's what you've done. That's what you were assigned to do. Mm -hmm. And even though he had all the specs and he passed it on to Solomon, he said, it will be your son who will build the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we just have to understand. So I thank you all. And uh, just, it's wonderful. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Barbara. Yes. So thank you, Barbara. Yeah, I'm going back to Genesis chapter one. And I just want to tie in what you've said, sister. 
with Genesis chapter one. There's something that's so key here. She said, what is the one thing you need to do now? What is that one thing? This is really important. If we look in Genesis itself, God did not create everything in one day. I'm going to repeat this because it's really important. He did not create. He first said, what is the one thing I must do now? And the first thing, it was dark. So what he needed at that moment was light. And he needed light in order to see. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's good. That is so good. Jimbo. That's good. What is the one thing? What is the one thing? Yeah. This is a marathon. I'm super excited. <laughs> super excited. I don't know. Charlene, have you got Kumbu? You're quiet. You got you got you. <laughs> Young lady, done. Whoa. I just have to say that. You know, God speaks one word. And when you said, Chipo, that you did not really discuss with us what we were going to speak on, you just gave us words, right? Refocus, vision, dreams, goals. And I have to say that my message and what's been deposited in my spirit, and it's been there for, for, for some time, is very much in alignment with which with which, uh, with what, sorry, Barbara just spoke about. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and, and that's exactly what you actually said at the very beginning yeah. when, we, when we got together. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you know, God's not confused. He speaks one word. He does. He definitely yeah. does. Definitely yeah. does. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome yeah, God absolutely. we serve. Wow. Absolutely. So, I just want to submit to anybody who's in the, in, in, in the group. Sorry, Kumbu. Yes. Kumbu, yes, did you want to... Yes, one of the words that... Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. One of the, one of the words that uh, has come in our home is the word stop. Um, and we've carried that word stop for a while. I think it's almost now a two-year word. Uh, and of course, COVID in the natural has caused the world to stop at multiple levels. And, and, and I'm almost feeling the word stop is an opportunity to find the one thing. And maybe yes. a, a lot of us are failing to yes. fully maximize this mm -hmm. global pandemic, this challenge, wow. this giant, yeah. you yes, know, wow. Goliath, yeah. Goliath caused the nation to stop soul and mm -hmm. all stopped um but it, it but it is, it is in the stopping that we're maybe able to discover uh, god's bigger agenda so thank you so yeah. much barbara that's yeah. profound yeah. wow wow yeah. wow Amen. wow mm. so just want to say to those people who are on zoom um if you've got any comments or any questions put them in the chat and we will definitely talk about them if you've got any questions or you just want to hear something further please feel free it's an you know it's an open platform this is us we're in discussion we're not just depositing we want to know what you feel have you got any questions and we're happy to to talk through this so without further ado i i want to introduce the second speaker uh you know this young lady i met her in the uk um we i remember when we had our lovely tea in blackie <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know how god works is um it's when you start to hear someone speak and then you understand that this is this wasn't me or her connecting it was god connecting us yes. <laughs> the vision that this young lady has and her past and where she's come from her testimony is phenomenal she, you know she will give it to you herself but for her to stand and to to give you and to talk to you about the power of God and what it has done in her lives. I really encourage you people to take notes. She's come from another angle, but has met Christ. And through meeting Christ, her life has just evolved. She's a woman of God. She stands behind the pulpit. She's an ordained pastor. She's one I truly, Charlene, you know, you're my sister. She lives right <laughs> next door to me when she's in the UK, when she's not in South Africa. But yeah, uh, Shannon, I'll let you talk about your where your background is and then just mm -hmm. connect this message mm -hmm. in terms of the refocusing, planning, purpose, dreams, vision and goals. So without further ado, yeah. I will introduce to you my sister and my friend, Charlene Duncan. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you so much. And I'm so honored to be on this platform with such amazing women. Uh, women who are adding value in the lives of others throughout this globe, you know, and, um, and like you said earlier, Chipo, that, 
you know, God connects us for purpose, for his purpose. And we have to, to understand that it's not about us. It's about what he's depositing in us to impact those lives. Um, I would just give a, a quick, quick testimony about where I've come from. I, you know, I'm, I'm from South Africa, but, and I did not know Christ until 10 years ago. But it is amazing that God knows who you are because he's chosen you. He has formed you in, in the womb of your mother before anyone else and anyone else knows anything or anything about you. But regardless of how many times your life detours and how many times you may miss the mark or whatever it is that you might not be doing that is, that, that is the purpose that God created you for, God finds you and he transforms you into who he created you to be. And that is, you know, just, that's just the one thing that I want to touch on today is that, that regardless of where you are right now, and like Barbara said, focus on the one thing that he's called you to do. Focus on the one thing that he's placed inside of your heart to do. Because if he can take me, and I was a very shy, very shy person who was very afraid to speak, but I was always on a platform because God allowed my mom to place me on a platform since I was eight years old. But even though, like I was, I used to transform into a completely different person when I was given the opportunity to speak, but I did not have the confidence in myself until I met Christ. And I realized that he created me for so much more, that everything that I'd been through was setting me up for, the for a time such as this. So even 10 years ago, he used me in such a way that he took me into nations without me knowing that he was preparing me for such great purpose. And the purpose is to speak his word, to bring transformation to lives and to help people find out who they are and who God created them to be. And, you know, my message today, and I'm going to start with it right now, is that, you see, as a person of faith, it is challenging for me to separate myself from the principles that I personally follow, which are found in the Bible. You see, they are profound principles which work. You will hear many successful people quote principles taken out from the Bible because it works. It has worked for thousands of years and it continues to work, you know, if it's applied diligently. And I will never share something, um, share anything that I've not personally experienced for myself. You see, since 2017, I've experienced a consistent season of storms, and it seems like the storm is continuing. However, but God has been by my side every step of the way, helping me fulfill my calling, live out my purpose, and pursue the vision and dreams that he has given me through his word. You see, sometimes the storms in our lives just come to throw us off course from pursuing our goals, our dreams, and our visions. But we are all created for purpose, and we were created to pursue our dreams and visions. But there are seasons where we have to be prepared to sometimes face affliction, challenges, and obstacles. But we cannot allow those detours and distractions to hinder, delay, or stop what God has called us to do. And trust me, we do, it, it does happen. It experienced, you know, I, I found myself like feeling, okay, no, you know, maybe I'm not called for this. You know, why are all of this continuing to happen? Why am I going through these storms? Yes, we, we question, but we have to try to get back to refocusing what we were created for because we created for purpose and we are empowered for purpose. And, I, and I've specifically been intentional about preparing to go into this year with my vision fully armed by the heavenly power and wisdom that God has blessed us with. But little did any of us know that our lives will be so adversely affected since 2020. However, it is not over yet. You see, I am personally believing for a supernatural sudden change. Right? None of us are exempt from challenges and the greater the storms that have come to stop us, to stop our purpose, the greater our purpose is. You see, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise a standard against it. And we have all been negatively impacted by this global pandemic. But I still believe and I hope for a successful second half of the year. Someone wise once said to me, Charlene, hope springs eternal. And something greater is on the horizon for us. Greater purpose, greater glory. You see, the opportunity to pursue your dreams and your visions lies within the power placed inside of you. This has to be, it has to be the time that we flourish, regardless of what we see taking place around us. We have to believe that, 
that this is just a season and the season will pass. We have to push past and persevere to what is in front of us and look to what is ahead of us. We have to imagine ourselves finishing this year with our fulfilled dreams, our purpose, our vision, that, what, you know, that whatever God has placed in our heart, it will come to pass. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of what is happening around us, we have to keep that vision. We have to keep that imagination. We have to you know, like see ourselves in it. Right? No more holding back. We have to give birth to what God has placed inside of our spirit. And if we have a burning desire of that dream, of that vision that we have within us, and if we have peace about it, then we have to pursue it. We either continue to step backward into fear or forward into growth. And we have to trust what God is saying, right? Our dream will come to pass, but we have to activate it through faith. And how do we do this? I personally do this through prayer and fasting, making a sacrifice of some sort. You know, we pray like every year at the beginning of the year, I always fast and pray. I go on a 21 day fast and it helps me. It helps me get clarity. It helps me get that vision for the year. And God gives me a word as to how to pursue and which direction to go in. And trust me, you will get detours. You will get that vision, but there will be things that come in your way, but somehow you have to persevere, all right? We have to believe in our hearts that we are overcomers. And how do we do that? We immerse ourselves with the whole armor of God and step into the fullness of what God has prepared for us through the dreams and the visions that he has given us. We prepare to step out in boldness. You know, we, we've already been given, the word says that We've been given all of the spiritual blessings. In Ephesians 1, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So you, are, you have everything you need that is inside of you. It is up to you to activate it. You know, the word of God says in Isaiah 61, Arise, people, it is time to arise. You've got to arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You know, it is not the time to hide. God is saying to you right now, you've got to shine. You've got to rise. You've got to be the light in that darkness. That dream that is placed inside of you, it is not time for you to remain stagnant. It is nearing 2021, but we need to prepare. We need to refocus and take ourselves back to what he has placed inside of our hearts. We need to be intentional about you know, finishing strong and taking the steps to fulfill our dreams, our vision and our purpose. It is time to take dominion over territories through business and our spheres of influence. You see, God positions us in places where we ought to influence, you know, we, it, regardless of where you might be, whether you're at home and you have your neighbors around you, but you are placed in a place, you are there in that place for reason, for purpose. It is your sphere of influence. How are you planning to use it based on those dreams and visions that God has given you and placed inside of you? It is time for you to arise, for your light and opportunity has come in the midst of darkness of this current world that we are living in. There's darkness all around us, but we are called to be the light. We are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of this world. You know, we have the ability, Shippo, we have the ability and the opportunity to change the narrative and to redirect our life and to align it with the calling that God has for us. You know, and if we are, and if we still feel uncertain as to what it is that we're meant to do, or we feel that we do not have purpose, or we have no dream or vision for the future, then we need to ask ourselves, what moves me? What do I really enjoy doing? What am I truly passionate about that I will do even for free? You know, that right there is it. You know, I personally, I do so much of freebies. I do, I just get, because I'm passionate. If you're not passionate about something, then you are, you have moved away from what God has called you to do or to be, you know, you have to be passionate. You, you will have that fire inside of you wanting to do and wanting to do it for free. You know, so God can, and even in this time when you feel lost and you feel that you're out of focus and you're not in aligned with what you were supposed to be or whatever it is, God can also give you a new dream, a new vision, a new gift or a talent, regardless of where you are at currently. You know, you need to start decreeing and declaring according to Job 22, 28, it says that we will declare a thing and it will be established. 
right? We need to speak it with our mouth and we need to believe it in our heart so that light shines within our ways. We need to claim our territories. We need to know as well who we are in Christ. And we have to remind ourselves that we, are inherit we have inherited the blessings of Abraham. You know, we got to declare that we will not just be successful, but we will be significant and influence, influential. Sorry, We have to use what we have to add value to our sphere of influence. We have to add value through our gifts, our talents, and our callings, because all of that's linked to our dreams, our purpose, our vision. You know, every good deed that we sow as well is a seed that will be used for us to flourish, to flourish in what God has called us to be. Because when we are operating within God's um, a purpose in our lives, we will certainly flourish. And we have to make it a time, you know, uh, make it a priority, even in this time, even in this, in this, this madness that's around us that we're currently facing, right? We have to, in this time, refocus to, to our dreams, to pursuing our dreams, our visions, and our goals, to also use that to help others grow. You know, who are we planning to mentor? We have to adopt a victor mentality and an abundant mindset and get rid of the scarcity mindset. Um, you know, Paul Martinelli, uh, our former coach, used to speak about this so often about that abundant mindset and getting rid of the scarcity mindset. And I believe that that holds up many of us back from pursuing those dreams and those visions that God's given us because we think, oh, no, you know, that's just too big that oh, I need this amount of money to do this. No, every step that you take, you take it by faith because nothing great happens just by not taking that step of faith and believing. Your, so your belief and your mindset has got to be abundant. It's got to be big. You know, you are called to pro be prosperous in every aspect of life, you know, because we are blessed of God. And when we are operating, like I said, within the dreams and the visions that come from God, that is when we will certainly flourish. We will operate out of the gifts and talents which, that, which we will be aligned to. You know, we'll be aligned to our dreams, our visions, and our purpose. And we, we need to be mentored as well, mentored and surround ourselves with people who have accomplished more than us. You know, you speak so profoundly about uh, uh, Barbara Littles. And I've heard of her, but I'm, I'm so honored to hear of, uh, you know, meet her today because I know that she's impacted so many lives. And, and, these, and, and it's people like Barbara who have impacted people to such an incredible level that we have to be a comp, uh, you know, um, connected with. We should never be shy to want to learn from others who have gone before us. You know, we, we not, because sometimes pride holds people back from learning from others, you know, and... Um, it's like the circle that we want to, to be part of. You know, we got to ensure that the, the circle that we keep, the people that we, have, uh, we are surrounding ourselves with are going where we want to go or have been where we want to be. You know, we develop and I grow our visions and dreams in this way as well. You know, I have a few mentors and coaches, just like you guys, you know, from John Maxwell to, to, um, to Mark Cole, et cetera, who I learn everything about leadership, about, you know, for ministry and for entrepreneurship, because we have to invest in ourselves. You know, in order for us to refocus, we have to make an investment. We have to invest in ourselves to be the best at what we want to be. We have to invest in the gift that God has already placed within us. You know, Dr. Miles Monroe, another man of God that I admire so much, you know, he's un uh, sadly he's late, but he also used to say a lot that we need to become people of value. You know, the gifts that we have inside of us, we've got to use it, that, that God's equipped us, but we've got to invest in it, to develop it and to propel ourselves into greatness because we have to become people of value so that we are in great demand, that people want to be around us, that we will want, you know, that people will see that light in us because we've taken the time to, to develop our gifts and our talents to be able to use it to add value to the lives of others. You know, and I want to just leave you with this one thing. I mean, I could, <laughs> I could go on all night, but I want to just say this, you know, the word of God says that in Acts 1, 4, 
it's Jesus talking. And he says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then in Acts 2.17, it says, then Peter, one of the disciples, stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So we need to get a vision from God. If you do not have it yet, you, that's what you need to do because you have to get that vision from God. How do you get that vision? How do you know what is it that you are truly called to do? And, you know, and I say this because I am of Christian faith. And, and I, like I said earlier, I speak only what I know has worked for me. Yes. You know, we seek wisdom from our creator. We get the vision by praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues for me is the gateway to dreams and visions. You will receive a vision birthed by the Holy Spirit. So we need to train our spirits to pray in tongues, right? We develop our prayer life. The Spirit of God uh, prays perfect prayers on our behalf. You know, we do not we don't have to just pray for a few minutes. We have to push ourselves in the spirit until we receive a deposit from God. You wow. know, and once you receive that vision, you write it down. Even Barbara said this earlier. And, you know, like I said, God has one word and he says, make it plain on tablets. As it says in Habakkuk 2 to 3, and I live by this, yeah. pray over that vision regularly. It yeah. will all come together at the appointed yeah. time. Sometimes it will tarry, but wait for it. It shall surely come. come to pass. You know, and then uh, just one more thing, uh, Chipo, before I, I hand over to you. <laughs> I'm just remembering in Genesis 37, I think it is, that Joseph had a dream. You know, his brothers mocked him and belittled his dreams. You know, we need to also be careful who we talk to and who we share about our visions and our dreams, including our family and friends. Because you see, not everyone will be aligned to our spirit and God's vision. There are many dream killers out there and God gave, gave you that vision. It's not for everyone's knowledge until it actually manifests. Wow. You know, sometimes our families, our friends will only want to uh, want us to succeed within the framework of their success and not beyond that. Mm. You know, we've got to look, look to break past where our families and friends have been. And we've got to look further. We've got to dream bigger. We've got to pray bigger. We have to become those ones who breaks that spirit of poverty. We've got to break that, that, that scarcity mindset. And we have got to believe that God created us for purpose. That is why he has placed those dreams, those visions inside of us. You know, we are, we are empowered to do great and mighty things because God's already equipped us with the gift and talents that he wants us to operate with. So we just got to get refocused and realigned and operate within his word. And that's going to be our power. You know, that is our power to become successful and not just successful, but to become significant and wow. people of value. Like John wow. Maxwell says, we are people of value adding value to the lives of others yeah all right amen <laughs> wow yeah, hand over wow. to you Chipa. <laughs> so just before i even we unravel what you've knitted <laughs> sorry i tried to Thank condense you. it no no, no. <laughs> wow no this is this is super important and uh, you you have delivered what god has told you to live to deliver and that is the key thing now keisha we were talking about this before our guests even logged in. Let me tell you that this live was, was almost very close to not happening. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We have had a very difficult month, let alone final week. Personally, within our lives, very, very difficult. We were this close to actually saying, can we just postpone? But I now understand, and I thank God, why we did not postpone. All I want to say to you is, Barbara, when you started, I wanted to jump off my chair. Charlene, I, just because I can be seen, I am stuck to my chair. <laughs> but there's some things when you hear, yeah. you want to, you know, and it, this is it. 
this is it. Mm. Now I understand why the enemy tried so hard yeah. to say today is not the day. You, it's not just the people who are listening that are liberated. I myself mm. am liberated. You feel the shackles, the chains being removed. You feel that yoke, the heaviness being lifted, that burden being lifted. And for that, I just want to thank you for your obedience. And I want to just say before we even go and dissect this word, if any of you guys are on Facebook Live, can you just share? Because this cannot just be for ourselves. Share it out across your platforms. Let people, there's a message here. And we did declare this, all of us, us, us five, that there was a message. And it's not a message that comes from Charlene or from Barbara, Kumbo, myself or, or Keisha. It comes from God. It comes from God. And wow, Charlene, now I'm just going to allow Keisha because when Keisha starts, then, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll put Keisha on a clock and then I will sort of, and then Kumbu and Barbara can come in the mix and then, ooh. Charlene, yeah. Charlene. Um, wow. There is so much, but let, let, me, let me zero in. I remember a few months ago, we had a theme at church. We were looking at detours. Detour, but not distracted. Detour, but mm. destined and so on. 2020 and the beginning of 2021 has taught us that on our journey, we will have detours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. Yeah. However, the onus is on us not to become distracted. Now, I want to say as well, and I want to go back to environment. If we are not in the right circles, when the detours come, we will not find the path to our destiny. Wow. Mm. Wow. I'm going to say that again. If we are not in the right circles, when the detours come, we will not get on the path that will lead us to our destiny. Because when they, when they, when they start to come, and then you said it again, if we don't recognize the need to be clothed in the full armor of God, but we don't recognize the importance of pouring our hearts out. So we're talking about prayer and fasting, pressing into his presence. And we know when it gets tough, it's hard sometimes. But we are reminded that he can even hear the warnings of our hearts. But we still have to be in position. So our one thing, if we pull back from Barbara, has to come back to our relationship with Almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. He's the first part of our circle. <laughs> He's the first part of our circle and everything about us is connected to him. So sometimes we, and I, I said it yesterday in a post, I didn't even know it was for this, but we lose things in the storm that we were never meant to have. Come on. So stop praying over everything that you've lost in the storm because it cannot be a part of the journey that God wants to take you on. Come so on. sometimes we are mourning things and wasting time mourning things. So Charlie, you give me so much to think about. I yeah. Before I'm going to I'm going to tag you. I'm going to tag team you. You're in the ring. You 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 tell me what you've gotten from that because that was that was powerful. That was powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbara, come on, sis. <laughs> I had a. Mary and Elizabeth moment mm. when my baby was sleeping. Oh, I can leap in the You've got to have people. You've got to. Charlene just came back on. Charlene, I said I had a, a a Mary and Elizabeth moment. You have to, when Charlene was speaking, you have to find those people that make your baby leap, right? And, <laughs> and my baby was leaping all over the place, okay? And so when we talk about this, you know, refocus, and the things that Charlene was sharing was so powerful. Yeah. And that's how you know when your baby leaps. Come on. Come when on. That thing inside of you, that dream, yeah. that vision that God has given you, when it starts leaving and it starts moving, you know you are in the right place. So Come on. <laughs> uh, I just wanted I just wanted to put that in perspective and to in reference to what Charlene shared. Um, that's how you know. You know, your, your baby starts to leap. And so yeah. those dreams and visions, uh, and even in those detours, like, like someone else said, those things come. The question is, what is it? Even as I'm pressing through, what am I supposed to learn? What am yeah. I supposed to take? And some things, like Keisha said, you're supposed to let go of. Yeah. They, because they cannot go into this next place. 
Yeah. They cannot go because yeah. the place, the opening narrows. Yeah. It narrows. The straight <laughs> way is a narrow way and it narrows. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Charlene. Come on. Come on. Uh, Pastor K, come on. Put your spin Thank because you. I, I want to wrap this one. Th this lady, I like I said, your baby leaping. My baby's like saying, oh, I have to get <laughs> Wow. Pastor K, come wow. on. Well, come I, I, well, I think I'm still trying to chew and digest uh, what Shalin what Shalin gave us. I think she dropped so many profound, uh, inspirational, not just principles, but foundational. I think le levers. I think in this time where everything's shaken, you know, the Bible says, "I will shake the mm -hmm. heavens and the earth." Mm -hmm. We need these mm -hmm. places, of, and when you go on a detour, everything can change. The scenery changes. Uh, yeah. The program changes. But if you have these places where you're anchored, uh, almost like a compass, yeah. and I think that's what you were doing today. You were helping us to recalibrate yeah. our compasses. So thank you so much, Charlene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The inspiration. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, you've tr you're trusting us into our destiny. <laughs> She's you. refocusing us, isn't she? That's the yes, refocus. Yes. It's, it's you know yeah. when you have the lens and you just want to make sure everything fits. It's almost you you twist, mm -hmm. and that's this is exactly what's happening today. This is exactly what's happening today. So you've noticed, this, when, you know, sorry, Charlene, come on, come on. Sis. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, everything I speak to you for is based on personal experience. And trust me, I've been through so many detours, yeah. so many things. And I think when, I, when we met as well, that very first time I shared a few things is that things really happen to just take you off, of course, to just detour you. And then you start questioning, you know, what am I just like? been crazy that that God's called me to do this you know mm -hmm. like why are these things happening but yeah. that's when you really know and that's when you know you have people around you like I'm very blessed to have my sister and I have a prayer partner my best friend that speaks into my life and prays with me and for me and and you need people like that to help you to remain focused and to be in alignment with what God has called you to be because yeah. when you lose focus and when you are not around people sometimes that will help you to stay focused and help you to actually move forward into what God's called you to be, you'll be completely off course. And you have to be connected to the vine. You have to be connected to the source. Yeah. Because if you, you cut yourself off from the source, if you cut yourself off from the word of God and being in the presence of God, you go in a completely different direction. It's you a lose different tangent completely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's how your focus goes away because now you're questioning your dreams, your visions, your goals, and your purpose. Wow. Wow. So I was writing now, notes. Let me just say, we have to Come treat, yeah. we have to treat this like a GPS. The yeah. Holy Spirit yeah. is our GPS. Yeah. When, when Amen. We off track, we don't think that that GPS refocuses us mm -hmm. automatically and tells mm -hmm. us you're going to get to the destination. The destination has not changed. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. just refocusing yes. you on how to get there. And so the Holy Spirit is our GPS. And we have to make sure that he is mm -hmm. the center of it all. Come on. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to call, call the paramedics over because <laughs> I'm going to get <laughs> we, won't, we won't cry over the detours. We won't spend years crying over the detours. Wow. We'll, wow. Hear, the, we'll hear our GPS and he'll and then, get us back on track. Come mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So I want, and, I, and I'm going to zip on your word, Barbara, because this is important. You guys know. Today, the word I want to just, the, what, what's coming out of my mouth is Genesis chapter one. It all began. <laughs> it yeah. all began. And Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 29. Now, th this, is with, this is what this young lady said. She said, who have you been called to be? That's the first question she asked. Then she, so, so in Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 29, we see that God now creates man in his image and likeness right? Mm -hmm. He's created male, female. He created them. Now listen, he's created everything else. He created the fish. He created everything else. But this time when he created you and me, he does one thing. The first thing he does is he blesses us. Mm -hmm. He blesses. So who has God called us to be? You and me. He's blessed us already. He blesses them. And he says to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and increase in number. Law of multiplication straight away. That success straight away. You're not mm -hmm. going to stay as just two. There's going to be multiplication here. Today, you and mm -hmm. I in this room are a, a, a consequence.
because of that very first blessing that happened to Adam and Eve right at the beginning. Come on. Right. Yeah. Talking in spirit here. But he now says, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over. Rule over everything that I've created. Rule over it. Rule over it. <laughs> I give you everything, he says. I give you the seed, the seeds, the everything. They're yours for food. All the beasts of the earth, everything that has breath in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. Now listen, after he created us, this is the first time we see a double positive. When he looked at you, when he looked at me, he saw that we were very, very good. 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 Yeah. Everything was good. <laughs> but you and me are very good to God. So this lady, she then said, we've already been given every gift. He did. I just read it to you. He gave us everything. It's repeated again in the New Testament. But I want to just show you that the first part of the Bible, you don't even need to flick through everything. If you read this chapter, just this one chapter, you cannot stay the same. Oh. Oh, he, created, he created Adam and Eve for purpose. To be empowered for purpose. Fruitfulness. Increase. Ah, yeah, yeah. Growth. Look, you know what? We might end up being here until midnight. And right. Don't forget Dominion, Chippo. Dominion! Dominion! Dominion. <laughs> <laughs> this is what God wanted to be telling you. I hope that you'll be excited after this session to open your Bible and start it from the start. But <laughs> read it with a creative mind because he's a creative mm -hmm. God. Read it with a creative I mind. Woo! Yeah. Chipo, just just as you're saying that he spoke a word yeah. you know it's so important as to the words that we speak yes because when we speak a thing and just like i said in job 22 28 is that we speak it we declare it we decree it our words you know speak life or death basically life yeah. and death lies in the tongue of the beholder yeah. so the the words that we speak that comes out of our tongue has got to be words that will propel you to yeah. where you ought to be going positive so if we yes absolutely and if we speak good things over ourselves and good things over our lives and the people around us and over those things that god has placed in our heart it will surely happen Come to pass you know? amen absolutely amen. because if he <laughs> spoke a word if he spoke a word in genesis 1 and he created the heavens and the earth we've got it he, he's our example he is you know, our example, and that's, this yeah. is why I'm reading and that's it. It's just the first yeah. chapter itself. <laughs> it, it will tie in with everything that everybody else mm -hmm. is saying here. That first chapter mm -hmm. is enough. Yeah. It's enough to yeah. take me it's to enough. the grave. Because everything else that's contained until Revelation is here. Book of Genesis. <laughs> Read this book, guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. Chippo, Chippo, it reminds me of what we spoke about last time we had our discussion is for us to start seeing ourselves as he sees us come on sis we yeah. will not be able to achieve any of this we can't claim any of it we can't experience it we can't walk in purpose until we choose to look at ourselves through his lens mm -hmm. come on sis because yep. we see ourselves so small yeah. yeah but he's created us to be mighty to be part because he's given us power and authority hence why we yes. can speak a thing and declare it and call it into being mm -hmm. yes. because of who he has created us yes. to, because of the power and the authority he's given yes. to us but until yes. we yeah. shift the lens we are going to be defeated we're going to feel stuck we're going to get turned around even more than we should in our detours because they're going to come but we get stuck in the wilderness remember how long the israelites walked around whoa let's not even talk about that one you understand <laughs> Yeah. But it's about seeing ourselves, owning who we are in him. Come on, sis. Don't look at on. what you see in front of you. Don't look at what you see around you. It has to be this. Yes. It has to yeah. be yeah. vertical. Uh, so, this yeah. is, so that mm -hmm. is fantastic. And I, again, I'm going to take this little thing. And literally, when we look through it, you can only see what Barbara was saying. And that's, that's one thing that you must do. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. put the lens down, you see everything. So there's a bigger mm -hmm. picture and then there's little nuggets that you need to start achieving. Yes. 
So God is the overall visionary who gives the big picture, but you cannot just go and grab that big picture. It's this that you need to actually say, mm -hmm. which corner am I starting with in order for me to build that big picture that God has already deposited in me? Wow. I, honestly, guys, woo, he is all I'm going to say. This is woo, icing on a cake. It's icing on a cake. So I just, I'm going to introduce our third speaker. Um, as, as you saw in the post, I, I said to you, you know, he, he's married to my best friend, one who I grew up with. And up until today, we pray. But when I met this man, he's one who I, I, I actually, I, I don't loosely, when I say this, he's a visionary. I mean what I say. He has a capacity to also see that overall picture and then allow you to, to build within. His, the, and it, it's attributed, you can see it in the work that he does and you can see it in the people that call him to do the work that he does. I mean, right now he's an Africa director looking after Equip and for, for him to do such a big task tells you what he carries, if that makes sense. So not only is he, you know, he, for me, he's one who's a, a sounding board, you know, bouncing off ideas. And we, we, you, Kumbu, you know, we always, he, like me, we, we dream and we have vision because I'm also visionaries. But when we sort of talk and clash and create the things that come out are amazing. And I, I just, I really wanted to get him in this space so you could get to know what's inside of this man and what he will share with you. Uh, yeah, you, I, I warned you to buckle seatbelts with Barbara. <laughs> and then I, I forgot to warn you about Charlene, but you know, you had to almost rebuckle them. Now I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't know what you need to do, but if your house is not safe, <laughs> pray, because what's about to come <laughs> is not even dynamite now. I'm gonna call it lethal weapon. <laughs> lethal weapon so without further ado I, I am going to introduce to you someone who who is really dear to my heart but dear to my heart because of his love for God and also his love for my friend because he looks after my friend very well very very well I'm going to introduce to you my brother and my friend Kumbukani Piri wow thank you thank you Chipo thank you Kisha and uh, Barbara and Charlene what an honor to just partner together in, in, in finding the mind of God. And I think I've been writing so much uh, as, as the ladies were speaking, and I'm going to, I'm, I want to talk about Moses at the crossroad of destiny, because, you know, Moses is interesting because he spent 80 years of his life, God taking him on multiple detours. But isn't it amazing that God's desire was to help Moses to find that one thing? And is it amazing that yet in every season, there, were, there, there was a thing that God wanted to do in every season. And I want to challenge all of us today, those of you that are listening, that no season that you've gone through is wasted by God. Uh, sometimes we, we, we are so wanting to find the future thing that we miss the now thing. And when Moses was at that crossroad of destiny, he's 80 years old. And these were the questions that Moses was asking. Will I stay where I'm at in the comfort zone of my presence? And maybe you're there right now. The present has become a comfort zone. It could be pain. It could be sin. You know, it's amazing to be stuck in your present. The other question Moses was asking is, will I go back to the pain of my past? Will I go back to the pain of my past? You know, at the age of 80, he looked back. He saw that broken prince of Egypt that had killed an Egyptian and was kicked out of the palace. Will I go back to the pain of my past? Will I be paralyzed by the uncertainty of the future? Is it, I think of the future and I'm paralyzed. I think of the future of, of, of my family. I think of the future of my children. I can get paralyzed. Or will I embrace the challenge to rise up and step into my destiny? And one of the things that's come up so far is that it has, it does, it, it, it's nothing to do with us. It is everything to do with the one who began the story in Genesis 1. Now, is it amazing that Moses wrote Genesis 1? So as, as Chippa has been Talking about Genesis 1, God uses Moses as the author of Genesis 1. Why? Because at the age of 80, Moses had to do a couple of things. He had to go through a process of repurposing. Repurposing. So as you are refocusing, make sure that you repurpose yourself. Because 
you can refocus on the wrong thing. And so what you need to do is, what, what does it mean to repurpose? This is the definition I'm giving it. To discover the unfolding of God's will and purpose for your life. And I think a lot of motivational speakers sometimes forget people that purpose is an unfolding journey. And so many times at the age of 13, I thought I was a pastor, but now at the age of 44, I turned 44 in two weeks. I'm not a pastor. I'm a, I'm a prophetic teacher, but it's taken half of my first half of my life. I've spent time pastoring people, but I'm not a pastor. I, I care for people, but I'm not, I'm not a good shepherd. I'm not good at keeping people in the pen. And it's taken me 40 years of my life to be able to come out of that season, that space of pastoring so that I can do my one thing which is to teach and equip people. So when I left Zimbabwe six months ago, I had to give up my position as an overseer of churches. I had to give up all of these. And I'm actually going through a detox right now because my identity was held up in all those functions that I had. But at the burning bush, God begins to strip Moses. And, and, and I'm at that place right now. I actually didn't want to say yes to speaking on this platform because I'm actually not at the place where, where I, I, at the highest place, I'm at the place where God is stripping me of everything. And, and, and part of the danger when, when, when you want to escape, you want to run away from the stripping and you want to take shortcuts, you want to take steroids, painkillers, but God is saying, no, Moses, you must face what I've called you to face, but I'm going to be with you. And, and, and I don't know about you, but the exciting things that God never leaves us, even when you're at that place where there's a meltdown. It could be an identity crisis. It could be a midlife crisis. It could be you've lost everything. God has never left me. His presence has always been with me in spite of my mistakes. And remember, for some of us, the detour was not a divine detour. You messed up. <laughs> but guess what? Even in that mess, God is, is able to cause all things to work together for your good because that's how powerful Genesis 1 is. Because in Genesis 1, is, Genesis 1 is, a, is, is a, 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 a summary of everything God put in seed form. And then he gives it to you so that we can unpack that. But it is part of our stewardship responsibility to unpack Genesis 1. Because in Genesis 1, why did God rest? Because he put everything we need. Everything Somalia needs. Everything America needs. Everything Zimbabwe needs is in Genesis 1. God is not working, my friends. You see, we think prayer is work. God said, I've read prayer is to make us work under God's grace and to unlock the fullness of all that good put in the beginning. And that is why after Moses has spent all these years running around as a prince of Egypt, running as around as a shepherd of Midian, and then delivering these people to, into the desert, what does he do for the next 40 years? He's writing, my friends. Ah, he's writing in the beginning. Now, why? what does Moses, I want to close with five things that Moses writes about. And Moses is asking five questions. And I believe these five questions will help you and I refocus. The first question is, who am I? Moses, who are you? Are you a prince of Egypt? Are you a prince of Midian? Or maybe you're a prince of God. Maybe you're all, ab all the above wrapped into a, a, a weapon that God has been preparing an arsenal for his glory. And I believe one of the biggest questions we need to be asking during this time of crisis is, who am I? And I think some, I think it was Kisha or Shalin who said, many of us, we need to be awakened to who we really are. I think Kisha said that. We need to remind ourselves of the way God sees us. And so Moses writes, number one, who am I? And that's why in the beginning, he doesn't start by identifying Adam as a Jew. Adam wasn't a Jew. He was just a human being. <laughs> and that's it. So Moses transcends tribe. He transcends religion. At that point, there is no Judaism. There's no Christianity. You just have a human being created in the image of God to give God glory. In a garden, a farm. <laughs> huh? No cities. No, no church, praise God. You know, I think if a lot of Christians had written the Bible, would have started with Acts chapter 2. But God doesn't start in Acts chapter 2. He starts in Genesis 1 and 2 with a man and a woman in a garden ready to worship God. How do you worship God in creation? By understanding who you are. It's the question of identity. The second question that Moses answers is the question of roots. Where do I come from? And he had to help these 4 million Jews, 3 million Jews, who needed to refocus because they'd spent all their time in slavery. 
How do I get these images of slavery out of my mind? How do I refocus when actually you're asking me to focus on something that I've never seen? How do I refocus on a promised land that I've never seen? And so that's why Moses says, well, my friend, the way to do it is to go back. One of my mentors who passed away many years ago said to me, Kubakani, life is lived forward, but understood backward. Life is lived forward, but understood backward. You have to go back. And guess what? We've been made to stop huh? lockdowns and lock-ins. And what is God saying? Kumbukani, who are you? Where do you come from? And I want to be honest with you. Sometimes I've forgotten who I am. I've forgotten that I am a child of God. And I've, and I've made mistakes. I've forgotten that, 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 that my DNA is in Genesis 1 and 2. It doesn't, it's not limited by my natural DNA for my, for my family, my mother and father. These two Chewa people that got married and, and, and had the privilege to birth to me. I don't have to end there. That's not where my lineage starts. It starts in Genesis 1 in the beginning. Question number one, who are you? Question number two, where do you come from? Question number three, where are you now? It's a question of assignment. So life is lived forward, but understood backward. But you have to find your location right now. Where are you now? Well, I'm Moses. I'm 80 years old. I'm Kumbukani Piri. I'm turning 44. I'm in a new country. I've just been in Malawi for six years, six months. Do a new thing. But God will only do a new thing old me dies. If I keep trying to rekindle the past 20, 29 years of ministry, you know, the, the, the fame I had in Zimbabwe. No one knows me in Malawi. I'm a nobody. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, in Zimbabwe, I had the keys to the city. I, I could call, you know, the, the men of God, the ministers of government. I call your people. Well, guess what? I'm only calling God in Malawi because I don't know influential people. Where are you now? Number four, where are you? Question of vision and mission. And I think many times we make vision and for purpose. I want to clarify this. You see, your vision and mission is the end. God will give you a vision, which is the end. But that vision has to be unworked through an unfolding purpose. Because God's purpose was that we were created to give him glory. But we will radiate the glory of God through different life, different assignments that God will give us through the unfolding of our life, culminating to a this is finished assignment. And so what God is wanting us to understand is where are you going? And then number five, how will you get there? And that's the question of strategy. So there you have it, my friends, the five key questions. I believe the first five books of the Bible are answering those five things. I know Leviticus looks complicated. Numbers looks complicated. But I'm telling you, Moses sitting in the desert with three million slaves, how do I make them into a great nation? I may not get to the promised land, but I can give them five books that will help them answer five questions which the Egyptians had tried to answer and they hadn't done a bad job. You look at Egypt. Those guys didn't know Yahweh the way they were meant to, but they were a mighty nation. They were the world power at that time. And what does God do? He uses the world power in its fallenness to prepare Moses to then sit in the desert and to sit with those slaves and to say, number one, who are you? Number two, where do you come from? Number three, where are you now? Number four, where are you going? And finally, number five, how will I get there? May the Lord help us tonight as we converge on this platform. In a sense, we're seeking out the mind of God. And thank you so much, Chipo. Thank you, Keisha, Barbara, Charlene, just for speaking to my life today. I don't even think in the seas where I'm at right now, I don't even feel I have the authority to be speaking because I'm in a meltdown moment. I think I've hit my midlife crisis and uh, I thank God that as I'm going through this almost a, a, a new Kumbukani that's being born, I know that I will never, never be the person that I am right now because of where God wants to take me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So Kumbukani, God bless you. I want to say something here super strong. None of us here are in the position to be where we're in. None of us. We're not equipped, but we are just answering and obeying the call mm -hmm. period that's what it is and mm -hmm. i think this is just it you know he, he, he doesn't he doesn't qualify he doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the ones he calls mm -hmm. and you as you say Amen. you are in that process all of us and you know if you looked at the post that i've been putting up i've been really intentional about saying 
we have all been going through a process. Mm -hmm. I think that's the good thing about mm -hmm. COVID. If we had looked a couple of years back, so, you know, when, when a coach speaks or when a mentor speaks or a pastor speaks, they will speak to a congregation where they feel they should be speaking because they say, oh, you know, the people I'm speaking to should be experiencing X, Y, Z. We, we sort of comp compartmentalize people. But to be fair and honest, every human being that still breathes today has gone through the same issue now. There's no one who hasn't mm -hmm. lost someone to COVID. No one, maybe some, some, like some of us, we've actually had COVID. Some have not had it, but at least you know a loved one or someone who's close to you that has, has had, had this, this disease. We know the impact it's had on the economy already, on society, on the environment, everything. It's affected everybody across mm -hmm. the globe. We actually have what we could call a common problem. So none mm -hmm. of us is equipped. Ooh. None of us is, and praise God that we're not equipped. Because all we can do, as Charlene said, is to give people what we know. We don't want to tell them about, I, I, I can't tell them about others, but the solution that I know that's worked for me is God. And for you mm -hmm. people as well is God. There's a time when we mm -hmm. must retreat, you are right, in order to go and revive. Retreat to refocus. Mm -hmm. Remember. Yes. The meaning of refocus is two things. One is to readjust a lens, or sometimes it's now to readjust a resource or time or yourself towards something new or different. It might not just be the same goal. Maybe God is telling you, readjust towards a new, mm -hmm. different. And that's, that's the beauty of this. Who would have known that today, each one of us are refocusing in our own different ways. And I would like to mm -hmm. submit to you, as sure as the people are here within the group and the people who are here, the guests who are here, each one of you, you can attest that one of you is going through exactly something that either Barbara has spoken about or Charlene or Kumbakani has spoken about. There's someone who is here on this platform that is going through that transition, that phase of having to actually go back to strip to nothing, so God creates you to become the something that he wants you for a season. Mm -hmm. I've had to change as well, looking mm -hmm. at my mind strategically and the work that I do as a coach. Kisha, you know, we've mm -hmm. had, had to mm -hmm. refocus and also change. God has shaped us in a different direction than the one that we were going in a couple of years back. And I, you know, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for, for such a time as, as, as Esther said, for such a time as this. Those questions are pivotal. And I'm glad yeah. because you've summed it up. I was going to go back to Genesis, but you've said it. Mm -hmm. That's where everything begins. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if, we, if we go in and we dig, we will actually find the answer to who we are and mm -hmm. whose we are. That's yes. that number two. Where do I come from? It's whose am I? Who do I belong to? So we know that even Satan came and he tried to deviate Adam and Eve. But still, the promise of redemption was there. So even when Satan received his punishment to go deep under, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Adam and Eve also received one, but they received redemption even through that. They were told that you will bruise the heel mm. of the serpent. Mm -hmm. No matter what Satan does or brings across to us, we still have authority. We still have dominion and we can bruise Amen. his heel. Amen. And not only just that, today, we are the children of Abraham that you speak. Mm -hmm. The seed of Abraham through that mm -hmm. death on the cross. Jesus Christ himself went through these five questions. At Gethsemane, who am I? He was kneeling down at Gethsemane. Where do I come from? To remind himself, what is my assignment? Mm -hmm. Where am I now? I'm here at Gethsemane. I'm saying, God, if this cup can be taken away from take it. But then he remembered, he saw your face, he saw my face. And he said, where am I going? I'm going to that cross. Mm -hmm. How will I get there? I will carry that cross. And when I do, those people will be reconciled back to God. So we're joined heirs with him today. The promises mm -hmm. that he's promised right from the beginning, we have that dominion, that multiplication that we read in Genesis 1 from 26 to 29 is ours today. Wow. Ladies, I'm just going to give the floor to you because, yeah, I've done my piece. This oh. is... Oh.
Yeah. I, I just, I just want to say this. I want to speak to, just to my brother for a minute. I know that you were on assignment to be here today. And I just want to share mm -hmm. with you because you are where I was 10 years ago. Hmm. So you were supposed to be here today. There's no wow. question about it. I, um, when I came to, uh, made my transition into the John Maxwell team and into what I'm doing now, I had been practicing law for 30 years. And my ident identity, and I did not realize it, was so wrapped up in law and what I would, had done for the last 30 years. I really had to spend that time with God to strip. And I use that word because I heard him say that today. And my first table message, for those of you who I'm talking about, my first table talk to the John Maxwell team was the night I became a stripper. <laughs> and I talked about all of the things that God had to strip off of me in order to help me to transform into the place that he had me 10 years ago. Mm. And over that 10 years, what I've learned, and I just want to share this with you, is that every single thing that I had done in the past 30 years went into that next space, but it went into that next space very differently. There were lessons learned. There were skills learned. Um, but I was in this new space, not knowing anybody, not knowing people. Within my other space, like you said, you know, all I had to do was pick up a phone. And so I look back as you were speaking, he gave me that reflection to look back over the 10 years and to see the wonderful works of what he's done when a life is bowed to him. So my brother, I just want to encourage you um, that it is so much greater, but he couldn't give it to you all at one time. So where you've been, but where you're going is so much greater. And it's all a part of this, who he's called you to be and what he's called you to do. So I definitely will have you yeah. in prayer. I just want to share that with you because I said I'm a twin. I have a twin sister. And when you began to speak, I said, well, I must be giving birth to twins because my baby is leaping again. It's leaping again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's precious. Thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, I I also want to just say to you, um, that that's what that was powerful, and it reminds me of where I am at as well. You know, I returned to South Africa, and Chipot knows this. I returned to South Africa about four years ago. It was meant to be temporary because my husband's from the UK. However, I left um, such a profound position and the experience that I was gaining over fourteen years working for a company in the, in the United States. I traveled the world. I was in a, in a good position and I was, in a, I was a person of influence within those spheres, but I had to leave all of that. And I came back, I came back to, to South Africa, to Durban specifically, which is a small, small town. And I myself have felt that, I felt that I've been, that everything I worked for, everything that I had, had been taken away. You know, and, and also that everything that I wanted to achieve, I kept hitting, hitting detours, hitting challenges, adversities, and it was all so close to home and it completely breaks you. But in this process, and I, trust me, I am still going through it. In this process, God refines us and he has such a great purpose for you. He has such a glorious purpose for you. Because we cannot receive his, the fullness of his fire, the fullness of his purpose, unless we are broken, unless we go through the fire ourselves. Because we, we won't be able to impact the lives of those who actually need us in their life to impact them. Because we have a story to share. We have a story of a victory that we have to share. To be broken. And... And being in that place, sometimes, you know, you think, oh, gosh, you know, like, why am I going through this? This is so hard. I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore. I don't I, I, because, you know, you're called, you know what God has for you. You see that vision and then you think, no, this is too hard. This is so hard that you just want to you want to give up. But 
yes, it breaks you, but at the end of it, you persevere, Kumbe. You persevere because at the end of it, you are going to receive this fullness, not just, just part, but the fullness of God's glory, the fullness of the purpose that he has for you, the fullness of him equipping you for such majestic things. And that's how you push through. You just see what that vision is, what he's called you for. Just like Jesus saw on the cross. You know, just like he saw on the cross. And he says, Father, not thy will, but your will be done. And that is what we want. We want the sovereign will of God in our life, in the purpose, in those dreams and those visions that he's placed in us, even if it means going through the fire. Because without the testing, without the fire, without being processed and refined, we cannot get to that glory. We cannot get to be used to that higher level of where he wants us. And you just stick with it, brother. We will be praying for you. Amen. Amen. If I can, if I can share this with you, this is the second or the third time it's become relevant. Your calling is going to crush you. Hmm. If you're called to mend the brokenhearted, yeah. You're going to wrestle with brokenheartedness. Mm -hmm. If you're called to prophesy, yeah. you're going to struggle to control your mouth. If you're called to lay hands, you will battle spiritual viruses. If you are called to preach and to teach the gospel, you will be shifted for the wisdom that anoints your message. If you are called wow. to empower, your self-esteem will be attacked your successes will be hard fought. Your calling will come with cups, thorns, and sifting that are necessary for your mantle to be authentic, humble, and powerful. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy. Your oil is not cheap. Humble, mm -hmm. we are all... There, we can all identify. And my theme for this year has been press under pressure. Because mm -hmm. if he's coming at me so hard, something greater is on the other side. Absolutely. If he's coming at me so hard, God knows that I can take it. If he's coming at me so hard, I'm on the right path. He's not going to bother with me if I'm not. So I bless you. Thank you. Because I know what it is to show up when what people see isn't what's really there. Yeah. Thank How you. Was it? Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm just going to share a slide because I want to sum this up. We, I, and then we'll just open the floor. If people have any questions or they've got any comments, then you can just... But I want to show you just... One slide, which I feel sums up basically what we've done today. Just bear with me and I will go into it. Okay. There's a famous man, Charles Swindle. He says, vision is the ability to see God's presence, to perceive God's power, to focus on God's plan in spite of the obstacles. I think that truly sums up basically everything we've said today <laughs> in, in a nutshell. It, and it, it only takes one who has been through an experience such as this to actually then write something to this effect. I think you all agree. So just before we close out, um, I just want to share with you Kumbu's, uh, Kumbu, Barbara and, and Charlene's products and their services. I know that all of you guys have listened to them. And if you want to get hold in touch with them, just ask them questions. I'm sure all of you guys would be happy for people to get in contact with you. Yes. Can I have permission to just share your details? If that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'll just share the details of our guests and as well as uh, the hosts. So there's Charlene. Charlene has spoken a bit about herself, but I think these, all these three people, these three guests of ours they are they are really i think they 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 are more than what's written in those words because i you know i've i've been with them so i know that they're more charlene she, she said she works with the john maxwell team she's a pastor at the revival 
Maya Global. She does empowerment, training and coaching, especially focusing on youth and women in leadership. Um, she does executive coaching, uh, women and youth empowerment, leadership development and training. She's a professional speaker um, and she does voiceovers for professional TV presentation and anything to do with pastoral services, um, get in touch with Charlene. So her details are here um, for you if you'd like to access them. Our next is Kumbu. Kumbu is, as he says, you know, he's, he's only just put his in, in a very small, but he's, he does much more than this. He does personal coaching and counseling leadership training and consultancy, as well as motivational speaking. Um, his, his, he has a list of clients. He's worked with NGOs, corporates, churches, and he does one-to-ones with individuals. So if you want to get in touch with Kubu, there's those details that are on screen. Um, we will be, this will be saved on YouTube as well as on Facebook Live. So you can go in and reaccess the video and just pick up um, information from there. And last but not least is Barbara, thank you. Here's Barbara's services. Um, Barbara does anything to think about communication. Yeah, we can attest to that. Collaboration, diversity, um, equality and uh, inclusion, leadership, team building, conflict resolution and negotiation skills. So she works with entrepreneurs and she is the founder of a group called Breaking Margins, which I am a member of and so is Keisha. Um, if you want to know a little bit about that, please just visit her website and hopefully we'll see you in the group. Yeah. And here's my darling sister, Keisha. Same thing. She's an online coach, training and does empowerment speaking. So basically me and Keisha and Kumbukani, Barbara and Charlene, what we do as coaches is we allow you to come outside of the box and then to see inside and also beyond the box. So you're not just stuck within the area you're in. We start to allow you to actually look and see the areas that are around you so that you can actually start to see, oh, there's my opportunity. I had not seen things this way. Oh, maybe I need to do things that way. That's what we are as coaches. And finally, this is myself, John Maxwell team as well, doing the same things that you've also seen and with a focus on ministerial governance and business consultancy and strategy. That's it for us, thank you so much for attending. But before you go, we'd love to hear your feedback. So I'd just ask if you guys just put, type into your, into the chat box, your feedback. Not only that, if you could, you're most welcome to unmute and actually talk. It'd be lovely just to hear your voices and hear what you felt and uh, about the session. As we wait for someone to come on, I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you so much. I think you were all supposed to be here. So thank you for being obedient and being in the room with mm -hmm. us today. Yeah, thank you all for the opportunity to have been a part of the session. It has been phenomenal. Uh, I'm not feeling that well, but I needed to be here. So I am here. I was listening, taking notes. And so again, I want to thank all of you um, for what you have imparted, what you have shared and God bless, continue to bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lula. And uh, before you do not even nip away, we will pray for you. We will pray for you. There's yeah. power in prayer. Yeah. And it says with two or more gathered in his name, mm -hmm. he is there also. So this is it. It's the purpose for it, you know. Thank you for joining us, but we will pray for your healing. We And if it, there's anybody else who has a prayer request, you'd like to, um, give it forward, please come forward. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a space for us to pray for one another. I want to say thanks very much to Keisha for inviting me to this. I mean, I've been to other sessions, but I, I, I too felt that I was to be here, definitely. And the interesting thing is that just this morning in the service that I attended online, the pastor preached about being focused and from Genesis as well. So it was confirmation that God is really speaking and he's challenging us to a new level. And I am truly inspired and encouraged and I do covet your prayers as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, Tisha Chippo and all my other friends. Roseanne here. Um, 
you know, I'm so minded of the word that says we're, we're two or three. Where 10, 11, 12, or 13 are gathered together in my name, I am there, and I am in the midst to bless. And, and, and truly, I have been blessed this, this afternoon. Um, the one thing, the one thing that stands out for me, the one thing that stands out for me is the one thing. And as I, you know, Barbara spoke about collaboration, and when we collaborate, so many so many ideas come to us as, as we hear the various speakers from Barbara and, uh, and Charlene and the, the lone male, the lone male, not a lone ranger, but the lone <laughs> male in the, in the room this evening. I am truly blessed. God bless you all. God bless you. Oh, thank, thank you, you Rosanne. So, so good to see you, sis. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much. So Chippo, there's, there's some requests in the room, um, okay. in the chat for prayer. So you can always, you can always pick those up. But go ahead, Barbara. No, no, no. I was just going to call to attention that Jeannie had a request for right. prayer. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So shall we pray? Does yes. anybody have, would anybody like to say anything before we just pray out? If that's all right. Yes. Okay. So... Who would like to pray? Some, would, would somebody like to pray from group? It's a, it's a praying group. And then we all just all interject. So would somebody would like to lead us in prayer? I can start for healing. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Charlene. Go ahead, Charlene. You go ahead. Thank you. Right. Father, we come before your glorious presence right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you that we have the honor and the privilege to be in your presence, Father. And right now, Lord, I just bring before you those that are sick in their bodies, those that are being attacked in their bodies and in their mind, oh, Father. And I thank you that your word said that by your wounds, we have been healed. So I pray right now that you will just touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed thee. You said that healing is the children's bread, Lord, that Jesus's body was broken, beaten, scourged and bruised so that we may be healed. Father, you said that we have been redeemed from all of the curses of the law. So sickness is not our portion, Father. I adjure that spirit of sickness out of your children's body tonight in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. I thank you for your precious blood, the superior blood of Jesus. And I command that spirit of sickness to leave their bodies now. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are working in and through their bodies now, for they are created in your image. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have been made whole as Christ has been made whole. We decree their healing now in Jesus' name. Your daughters in, that, that, I, that have come and asked for your healing, Lord, we thank you, my God. We thank you that it is done, that they shall come forth and give a testimony to bring glory to your name, O oh God. And I thank you right now, Father, that you have given us the opportunity to meet. And you said, Lord, that when two of us are two or three are gathered in your name, you are here in the midst of us. So we thank you that we will bring your name high and lifted up, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we will set out in purpose, that we will gain clarity because clarity comes from you. The vision yes. comes from you, Father, that you will set before us, my God, that vision. And I thank you that we will, the scales from our eyes will be removed, Father, that we will come in alignment with your word. We will come in alignment with the purpose and for the vision that you have placed in our hearts, my God. We glorify and magnify you tonight, Lord. And we say thank you. We say thank you that we can abide in you and you in us, Lord. We say yes, thank God. you that we can come before your throne room of grace, Lord. We thank you that you have promised that you have made us victors and not victims, that we are the head and not the tail, that we yes, are above only and not beneath, yeah. that the grace greater one lives inside of us, oh Father, that Lord, my God, that we shall step into our purpose for the purpose and the plans you have for us. You have already created us in your image to do great and mighty things in your name, in your glory, Father. So we thank you right now, Lord. We just praise and magnify you, Jesus. Father, this yes. afternoon, this evening, tonight, wherever we are, Father, we covet your warring angels this yeah. evening, Lord God, yes, to Lord. cover us, to cover yes, each Lord. and every Thank one you. in this room. Father, yes, we pray Lord. for your peace. We pray for your protection. Hallelujah. 
We pray yes, for your ceiling you, over our assignments, Lord God, that you've called us to be. Father, we come against the spirit of confusion. Mm -hmm. Father, we come against the spirit, Hallelujah. Lord God, that it would prevent us from finding that clarity that you would have us yes, to have Lord. so that we can walk in purpose, so that we can be the persons of significance and influence you, that you've called us to be in this earth. Almighty God, cover our homes. Cover yes, our Lord. families, Lord God. Thank cover you, our Jesus. children. For those who have husbands and wives, Father, cover their spouses. Mm -hmm. Cover them yes, under your Lord. blood. Father, we come against every attack of the Thank enemy. You, Father, Jesus. clothe us in your Hallelujah. full armor. That even as we set yes, out on assignment, Lord God, we know that we are covered by you. you, you yes, you yes Lord. Us Hallelujah. Thank Father, you have said in your word, you've not yes, given us Lord. a spirit of fear, Lord mm. God, but of power and of love. Hallelujah. And of a mm. Father, for those of us who've been battling with our thoughts, Lord God, oh, if we are yes, where we're supposed my God. to be. Why thank we you, are in you, this Jesus. season, why yes, we're experiencing Lord. what we're experiencing. Hallelujah. Father, we speak your peace. Yes, Lord. We speak your peace. Yes, we speak Father. Hallelujah. Peace. Yes, Lord. We speak your peace, Lord Hallelujah. God. And Father, yes, we just give you Jesus. thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, praise. Father, even yes, as Lord. we continue to walk in obedience, you, strengthen your daughters and your Hallelujah. sons. Hallelujah. In the Hallelujah. mighty name of Jesus, I pray mm. and with thanksgiving. Yes, my God. Amen. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Heavenly Spirit. Father. We just thank, thank you, Jesus. Father, that our future is in yes, your Lord. hands. Amen. Thank you that we are yes. inscribed in the palm of your hands. And thank you, Hallelujah. God, for watching over us. Thank you for being the strength of our lives and the portion of our lives forever. Mm -hmm. Thank oh, you for yes, being Lord. a wall of protection around us. Thank you for yes, being Lord. the song in the night season and for sustaining you, us until the Amen. break of dawn. Father, we Hallelujah. declare that following this meeting, a new yes, day Lord. has come. We declare yes, that my this God. is Thank a new you, season. It's a new season and joy has come. We declare that the morning is here and we are in the center of God's will. Father, our lives will be yes, framed by your word and Thank we are additions to creation. We declare yes, that we are Thank people you, of God. impact. Thank you, Holy we are people of Lord, impact. Are so we add value to yes. this generation and yes, for generations Lord. to come we are yes, signs and we are wonders father hallelujah for recipients Thank you, of god's mercy and loving kindness father may hallelujah. your grace continue to distinguish us thank yes, you for your Jesus. favor god we are blessed the Thank curse you, of the law is reversed in hallelujah. our hallelujah our father yes, we will Lord. progress and we will prosper yes, in everything God. that we yes, think God. and do father Thank our you, lives Jesus. will be a testimony of god's goodness Thank you, Father, for planting us by the streams of living water. Mm -hmm. We will be yes, eternally Lord. fruitful. We Amen. dwell in the Thank secret you, place of the Most High. Mm -hmm. We are safe from every trouble, from every heart, hurt and harm. We are everything that you have called us to be, Lord. Everything that you say we are and our destiny is real. Thank you for creating us and ordaining us for purpose. Amen. We will never Hallelujah. be a disappointment yes. to creation. We will operate under open heavens. Yes. Nothing Hallelujah. is difficult for us. Yes. We have yes, the oil Jesus. of your presence, Lord. Your, your oil is our presence. Things will happen yes, for Lord. us easily and we will shine you, like Jesus. the sun. Thank you, Father, Thank you, that we have the spirit of excellence. Jesus. And by the power of God's spirit, we will exceed every boundary set by you mm -hmm. and by men. We will fulfill mm -hmm. our glorious destiny that you have put in us our God mm -hmm. and our creator. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we believe Hallelujah. and we say, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. Awesome. Thank you so much for just being a part of it. Keisha, I, I <laughs> can allow you to just close I, out. I continue to be, to be blown away because we can never, ever predict what Almighty God is going to do. Never, ever, in as much as I know Barbara, and I'm now meeting Humbu and Charlene, kindred spirits, as, as Chippo yes. would say, and, and walking in obedience. And as I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. God turns up and he turned up. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> really yeah, yes. On fire and I, 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 from the messages in the chat and so on, I know persons are getting what is for them. And I pray for those who are connecting on Facebook that that has been your experience mm -hmm. as well. And we, we yes. just thank you. Thank you for sacrificing the time thank uh, you. to be here with us this afternoon. Yes. Thank you very much. The battle thank may be you. hot. The battle may be hot, but you're not mm -hmm. in it alone. 
Yes. God is with Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. And if you need mm -hmm. to reach out to us as coaches, as men and women of God, please feel free to do that because we are here to support you on your journey as that you pursue your purpose <laughs> with yeah. passion. Mm -hmm. So Amen. God bless yeah. you all. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you.